In this quick lesson, I'm going to explain to you how to use the welding and shaping tools here in the Design Centre. I've got some basic shapes here, and I'll show you in wireframe where the problem is. As you can see, there's a lot of overlapping lines, and we need to remove these, so when it comes time to cut, we don't have these lines uh, in our cut file. Now the thing is that you, you need to understand is the relationship between the objects with each other and how they work with uh, welding. So you can see this triangle was above the circle and it was above the square and if I sent it to the back I've now changed its Z order. Now I can bring that back up like so to the front so that when I come time to punch and trim and things I'll get different effects. Now to begin with let's talk about just welding. So if I want to weld all these shapes together I can click weld here after selecting them all and you can see all these overlapping lines have vanished. So when I cut this it'll just cut as one piece. And of course I can weld individual pieces together, like the circle and the square, like so, or the triangle and the circle, like so. So that's how that works. Just simply select the objects you want to weld together and click weld, and they weld together and remove the overlapping lines. The other thing too is I might want to remove this triangle from this circle. So I use the punch tool. And you can see that the triangle has now been punched out of the circle. In other words, it's been removed from the circle, as you can see here. And I may also want to remove the triangle from the square. So I simply select the triangle and the square together like so. I click punch. And you can see the triangle has now been removed from the square. So that's how punch works. Now the opposite of this is where you want to punch out the object uh, furthest away at the back. So I want to bring, I want to punch the square out of the circle and the triangle, for example. So to do that, I need to use the stamp tool. So I select these objects that I want to stamp out, and click stamp, and you can see the back has now been removed from the front. So it's the opposite to punch. We've actually removed the background uh, object from the foreground objects, like so. The other thing you may want to do too is keep an object that you've punched out. So I might want to keep this triangle over this uh, circle, but I might want to punch it out. So I click Trim, and you can see here that it's actually punched the triangle out of the circle, but it's retained the triangle. So that's what Trim means, that's what it's referring to. It's actually keeping the object. And I can do that here. You can see that it's removed from the square. I still have the circle, I've punched the circle out of the square, but I've retained the circle by using Trim. That's how trim works. Now similar to this is intersect. Intersect is actually worried about the uh, overlapping sections and actually retaining those. So it actually keeps the overlapping sections as you can see there. And much the same as trim, I can actually keep the, uh, the object as, as well. So by keeping, clicking keep, it intersects or you know, welds out the overlapping shapes, or sorry, keeps them and it actually keeps the, uh, the, the objects underneath as well. I can also show an example of that using bitmaps. You can see we've got this circle shape and this bitmap here, and if I select both of them and click intersect, it intersects the two shapes together and leaves the intersected section, as you can see here. Now, this is actually now a curve, and you can take a note edit it, and it's actually a clipping path over the image. Now, clipping paths, you can see them here, I can delete a clipping path, I can extract it, I can also trim it. These are a bit more advanced concepts and they've got their own lesson, but I'll just quickly show you what I mean by extract. You can see I can actually extract out the clipping path as a separate shape, which is that circle again, but I still have the original clipping path here on the, uh, on the image. So that's actually created a, a, a path that uh, is a part of the image now. You could come in and create your own node edit. Another tool we've got here is Power Clip. I'll just quickly show you what power clip is. If I select this arrow and put it in wireframe, you can see I have this word underneath and this image underneath. Now I can use the shape of the arrow as a clipping path or a power clip object over the top. So I select the whole lot, I click power clip. What that means is, is the arrow shape now is actually the power clip of the shapes underneath it. And as you can see, it's just one object that I can move around. But the advantage with this is unlike uh, a clipping path, I can actually edit the shapes underneath here in the Object Manager. So I can click the arrow, now I can click this artistic text and the image itself, and I can select these and actually edit them 
in the power clip you can say I can make the image or this text bigger I can change its color I could give it a texture I can change the font I can do all sorts of things I've got no limitation I can move it out of the way and bring it back resize it do whatever I like uh, it doesn't actually affect the whole thing it just means I can, I've got all this edit control and as you can see I can move the image in the background to any position I like I can stick it here if I like I can move it back roughly to where it was I could make it bigger, smaller, rotate it, do whatever I like. It's the background uh, image to the power clip shape above it, which is the arrow at this point in time. And the arrow acts as like a container of everything underneath, and it just clips the actual image by the shape of the container. I can also adjust the uh, container itself, or the arrow, as you can see here. So that's the way power clips work. They're actually very, very useful cre for creating pretty complex artwork like CD covers is a perfect example where you can use a round power clip and you've got all these extra options with power clips they've got their own lessons you can go and see those that generally covers the uh, the welding tools I'll just show you where some other tools are I've shown you um, for example uh, all these uh, tools in the design center here but you've also got them over here some some more tools here uh, and there's some actually quite advanced shaping and welding tools in the objects menu as you can see here you can weld layers and you can do some advanced techniques all have their own separate lessons and I encourage you to go back and watch those uh, and that's where they all are that's the end of this lesson thank you